What if I get a solitude time going in my life and during it I feel bored? What do you do there? Yeah. Well, you know, that means you're going to hell, so that's a bad... <laughs> Good. Thank you for coming to our yeah. round table. Yeah. That's all we... No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I will guarantee you'll feel bored. I will guarantee it. And that's a very good thing. A uh, wow. couple good. words about boredom. Boredom is tremendously important. In the ancient world, they did not have a word for boredom. Hmm. Like there is no ancient Greek word, any of you New Testament scholars, for boredom. Now why is that? We look back at their world and we think, what a boring world. Like, no television, no movies, no radios, no iPods, no cell phones, you know. Why didn't they have a word for boredom? Well, one of the challenges in our day that is a much bigger challenge than was the case back in that day is um, people used to have to take responsibility to exercise um, their capacity to focus attention. So like one of the things you had to do in the ancient world is, you, one of the reasons why people used to love to memorize, like we look at those long, long lists of begats in the Bible and think, man, is that dull? But in our day, there are people who have memorized every episode of The Simpsons. In the ancient world, that stuff wasn't dull. That was the story, and they loved to be able to think about that. They actually would work. Memorizing was much more common back then than it is in our day. That's why the oral traditions were way, way more reliable than we tend to think they were. People used to realize they had to strengthen the muscles of focusing the attention of their mind so that when they were by themselves, when they were shepherding or whatever it is that they were doing, their mental experience was rich and full. Now, we live in a day when we depend on external stimulation to occupy our minds, and when we don't have external stimulation, then we get bored. In our day, the unaided mind tends toward fear and anger. Mm. Now, the way that Paul put that was, the sinful mind is death. That's the same point. So when I go into solitude, see, what happens is I am absenting myself from the props that keep my life scaffolded, and then I find, what do I have when there's just me and God? And a lot of that's going to be boredom, particularly at first. And then I have the chance to be alone with God and to say, now, God, how might I cultivate a mind where I'm able to be alone with you, unaided, and to have a mind that is full of rich, joyful, loving thoughts? And now that can be cultivated. That really can. And then people who live great lives, they have minds. Because that's why be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Well, solitude is the place where you begin to find out the truth about your mind. And most of us are so afraid of boredom that we're not willing to have that happen. And so we have to have music, or we have to have a screen, or we have to have something. Because you know, God forbid that we should be bored. Boredom is a fundamental necessity for spiritual growth. It, solitude doesn't begin by transforming my mind. It begins by revealing my mind. Mm, that's good. And then over time, my mind can be transformed.